All right, this is Derek Big Walker, and uh, today I'm giving you uh, tips and tricks for the blue saxophone. Uh, yeah, yeah, for my harmonica students or all those who've been uh, watching, following my series about blues, the folk, uh, harmonica. Uh, some of you didn't know that I'm, I'm also a saxophone player, and I was the saxophone player in the Michael Bloomfield band, and. And uh, Percy Mayfield and a whole bunch of other guys, but uh, that's one of my instruments. I started playing the harmonica when I was seven. I started playing the saxophone uh, when I was 16, and I played with a lot of blues guys. I played with my own band, stuff like that. Anyway, I, I, I saw some of the saxophone videos out there, and none of them were really geared towards the real blues. I mean, some of them, they show blue scales, and they, they, most of these guys are... Uh, either uh, jazz trained or classically trained. It's a whole different thing playing blues. Blues is blues. You're not playing jazz and uh, of course there's, there's uh, some jazz in the blues and there's a uh, uh, there's all kind of blues in jazz. I mean Charlie Parker was actually a uh, Kansas City uh, blues saxophone player. Uh, this is a real good one, <laughs> you know. So anyway, get you started. And uh, for some of you that, that that haven't played the saxophone before, you know, having no musical knowledge uh, to play an instrument like the saxophone is, is very difficult. You should start out with the harmonica, then, like I did. <laughs> start out playing the harmonica and and learn to play on that with a good tone and everything and then uh you know then you could try a saxophone but anyway so you, you got a saxophone i got an alto here i only play vintage horns this is a, a 1938 uh, con naked lady and they call it naked lady because they got a little naked lady on there if you see her she got her breast out and uh this is a very very good horn really a, a great sound the newer horns have they they have different sounds first of all you got to Get yourself, if you go play the blues, then you want an instrument that sounds like a blues instrument. If you get a very modern instrument, it's going to give you a different sound. So you want, a, want that old sound, get yourself an old Buescher, old Con, uh, something like that. I also, my, my, my tenor, I have a King, 1938 King, same same years as my also the, but the, the 30s, they made, they made good stuff. Uh, before the war, and because uh, after the war they had the well during the war, the Second World War they had to uh, use the metal for for other things. So it was harder to get a horn made out of the same uh, material. And then, uh, of course, what everybody wants is a, is a you know a, a, a Silver Mark Six. But good luck, you know they they cost a lot a lot of money. But anyway, so so when, once you got your horn, this is an alto saxophone. It's in the key E flat. And uh, then uh, the hardest thing then in the very beginning is to get to get the read. You get you get because your armature is not de developed and it's gonna it's gonna change your your armature. This is the read. It's called a read. This is the saxophone read, and uh, you you have to get a read that 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 that's right for you, and that's gonna be hard when you know you don't have much of an armature. So uh, get yourself an assortment of, 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 of strings in, in the beginning because your armature is going to be changing quickly. Get yourself a one, a one and a half, a two, and a two and a half. And that, that ought to do you for a while. Uh, three is probably going to be too strong for a beginner. But let's say you already play a little bit, just not, not a lot. Then maybe you could, you should still have that variety in the beginning, you know, so you have a, uh, and every read is different. Hmm. Another problem there. So maybe you get a good one that's like a two, a really good one, and then you put on another two and it's too stiff or too weak. That's just the way it is. That's the nature of saxophone reads. So you soak your read for about uh, 15 minutes in uh, in, in, in knots in in in, in uh, like body temperature. Water. We just stick your finger in the water. You shouldn't feel anything. It's the then it's the perfect uh, temperature for soaking the reed. It shouldn't be hot hot water. That that'll close all the pores. So then you take take your reed out and get a, a flat surface. I've got nothing right here. Find yourself a flat surface. 
Uh, this book isn't really flat. And uh, you can take any kind of dust or uh, dirt. They actually sell some special powders, but it, it doesn't really matter. Just enough of the oil that, that's on your finger already is enough, and you lightly rub, rub it on the Rub it on this part of the reed so that it fills in the pores. So you fill in the pores, it'll, it'll make it play, play better. Uh, so your, your reed is soaked. You got uh, probably in the beginning, if you're a beginner, saxophonist, then you got number one reed on there. And you've been playing for a while, you about got a two and a half. And then where the place to read is just so you can find it. And so there's a little little edge sticking up there, like that. You can see that about like that. And you have to adjust it yourself. Find this one. If you have it too too far down, too much air will come through. You have it too far up, it won't play right, and it'll be easy to ruin the read. Okay, so you got that part. You got your read on there. And then uh, there's two basic armatures. One is that uh, you, uh, the, the, the first armature is your top teeth, and your bottom lip curls over. Never, never, ever, and I mean never, no matter what you're trying to do, Put your teeth on the bottom of this reed here, your bottom teeth here. It'll ruin the reed almost instantly. Uh, so use your bottom lip. Yeah. What was the discoloration on my lip for playing on the X for a lot of years? And then your cocky. And then it's got to go, unlike a clarinet, it's like this kind of over Okay. This is more in this direction. In this direction. I like that. And then, don't pop out your teeth. Don't go. But go. And so th these muscles have to be developed and all this it takes time. Um, there's an easy exercise that you can use anywhere to uh, a, a supplement. You simply draw in the corners of your mouth. Put put your lips together. Go around doing that for like you know, hold that for like a minute. Blow out and do it again. I, I show that same exercise for my beginning uh, harmonica uh, students. And your armature again, nice and strong in no time. Then you put that on there, and you adjust the tuning by moving it back and forth here on the cork. Then you get a little a, a little felt pen and mark where about in tune is, so you don't have to mess with that so much every time. And when the instrument is cold, it's flat, and when if it's too hot outside, it'll get sharp. And that's the way it is too. It's another the nature of the instrument. And you, and you and you got that on there. And then uh, okay, you need to know something about about music. You gotta play the saxophone. You gotta uh, you gotta take a, be a beginning piano class. That'll help. Uh, need need to some know know about about some theory. You need to know all your major scales. Start out with C C major scale just to make it easy, and that's just this one down. You see that? So all the notes have to be down for that to work. So uh, it's everything is in sequence. So all these have to be down. So first of all, this is your bis key. You don't you're not going to use that now. So it starts here. This is C, and this is B. And we're going to go down C, B, A, G, F, E, D, and there we go, C. So that's, that, that's the first skill you got to learn. And it's going to sound not so good in the beginning, and there was starting on that low note. If you haven't been, if you don't, haven't been, been playing for a while, you got the right read on there. So you're gonna to have to work, work work on that, and uh, you need to work on all your major scales. And uh, that's this is just your first introduction. I haven't done any um, saxophone videos yet before. This is this is my first one. 
I've had some students, though. They all got better than me. It's amazing how they do that. Uh, it's just going to take, take you some time, though, and I'll, I'm going to show you the blues way of playing the saxophone. We're not talking about jazz. This jazz player is out playing me up and down and in middle and forward. But uh, but not a play in Chicago blues. That's my world. And if you want to know more about my world, I want to want you to, 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 to get back to me or I'm not going to bother making none of these. <laughs> I'll waste my time, you know. But if you're interested, oh, I guess, no, oh, let me hear him play something. Can he play some blues? I ain't hearing him play no blues. Okay, I'll play some blues for you. <laughs> I could play a little bit. See, <laughs> so I tell you what, you all get back to me now, and I'm gonna make some uh, videos for you about playing the blues on the saxophone, both tenor and alto. All right. I would say keep on harping, but I got to think of a new one now. That's why I used to say with my harmonica students, keep on blowing. <laughs>